Hello and welcome to February's edition of Max UFO News. We have quite a mixed bag for you this month including a freebie, so stay tuned for that. We're starting things off with rather a controversial topic within ufology. Grab a coffee and strap yourselves in. It's UFOs and religion. Tens of millions of people have seen UFOs. Many even recall personal encounters with strange entities. And the popular view is that these are advanced aliens visiting us from far, far away. Hi, I'm John Schneider. This compelling new movie takes a deeper and honest look at the events, the beliefs, the experts, and the people that have shaped our beliefs in all things otherworldly. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. It was the mayhem surrounding the cover-up that created what's been called the Roswell incident. I had multiple experiences with like little beings in my room. It's global. We have reports now from 140 countries. Our commanders all told us just keep your mouth shut about it. Join us and live in peace or pursue your present course and face obliteration. In our investigations, we were finding things that we just couldn't get answers for. I was literally thrown into the bed. I cried, help me, Jesus, please help me. It's one thing to just deny. It's another thing to say, we believe you had an experience, but here's God's take. When one takes a deeper look at this phenomenon, it reveals one of the most disturbing yet powerful affirmations of the truth of the Bible and Christianity. Now, I'm a science fiction fan, and I can tell you the truth is out there, but it's a lot stranger than any science fiction. It's claimed that over 20 million Americans have seen a UFO. The Roper poll concluded that up to 4 million Americans had been abducted by aliens. I've been involved in the development of space vehicles for exploration for over 60 years. You know, there are massive problems with the idea that advanced aliens can simply warp themselves around the galaxy. The Starship Enterprise travels at multiple factors of light speed. It is estimated that there are 100,000 dust particles per cubic kilometer of space, traveling at about one third the speed of light. Even a grain as light as a snowflake would be like a pinpoint explosion of four tons of TNT. These alleged aliens coming to us from distant star systems are nothing of the sort. Rather, they are deceptive entities emanating from another dimension. These experts tell us that the very laws of physics must be violated if these aliens are to get here from distant star systems. But I'm telling you that I've now met hundreds of people who've seen things and even claim encounters with beings and they've got no explanation about their experiences. I remember them coming into our bedroom. Yeah. My daughter's crib was at the foot of the bed and I watched two of them come over and pick her up out of her bed. She was so scared. You know, I believe something actually is happening to her. Millions of people have seen UFOs and many even recall personal encounters with strange entities. The popular view is that these are advanced aliens visiting us from far away, but this compelling new documentary takes a deeper look at the events, the beliefs, the experts and the people who have shaped our views and the otherworldly. When one examines this phenomenon, one of the most disturbing but powerful affirmations of the spiritual realm, Christianity and the Bible becomes clearer. This documentary seeks to solve one of the most haunting and persistent mysteries of our time by addressing UFO sightings in every country, things seen on radar, what happened at Roswell, alien abductions, government cover-ups, and even a new religion. Based on the Amazon Top 50 selling book Alien Intrusion, UFOs and the Evolution Connection, Gary Bates' 2005 book is still the only creation book to achieve this feat. And this is mainly due to the subject matter itself the UFO phenomenon, 
fueled more than ever by modern science fiction and its portrayal of highly evolved and technologically advanced aliens traversing the galaxy, seeding and even overseeing the evolution of life on Earth. People are simply fascinated by this issue, which presents itself as an ongoing mystery to be solved. Consider the plethora of cable TV series dedicated to aliens and UFOs to understand how our culture is saturated with this subject. Such views have caused countless people to disregard the Bible's history of origins in favor of the notion of the evolution of life occurring throughout a 14 billion year old universe. The Alien Intrusion book uncovered and confronted a much darker side to all this, than is generally presented in feel-good movies such as Star Wars or Avatar. For example, one poll concluded that up to 20 million Americans had seen a UFO and possibly 4 million claimed to have been abducted by aliens. Such statistics are shocking, even to many Christians who are simply not aware. Norio Hayakawa wrote, As a long-time investigator of the UFO phenomenon, since 1961, I have come across hundreds of so-called UFO documentaries over the years. But nothing comes even close to the ultimate, hardcore truth presented in this brilliant, profound new film, Alien Intrusion, Unmasking the Deception. The accuracy of documented facts arranged throughout such a wide range of contents in this film is simply unprecedented and staggering. This is a must-see film not only for those who are interested in this real but deceptive phenomenon but also for the public at large who have never thought about it from this angle. I can guarantee that this film will open the eyes of everyone that views it. It will completely change one's world view and will lead to a deeper understanding, and for many, a reconfirmation, of what the truth is. So Gary, I thought we'd get together today and talk a little bit more about this upcoming film project, The Alien Intrusion Movie. And I think a lot of people are curious, why did you embark on a project about the UFO phenomenon? Well, I suppose, Scott, I've got to go back to why I wrote a book on the subject in 2005. I only became a Christian in my adult life, so I could recall the influence that science fiction had on me as a young man, you know, with its portrayal of alien worlds, futuristic technology. And a lot of people don't know or realize that science fiction has a lot of messianic themes in it. In fact, ufology has been recognized as a substitute religion by sociologists and many other professionals. So when I came to Creation Ministries International full-time many years ago, I proposed the idea to leadership that these themes actually had a very strong underlying evolutionary connection. Simply put, if you know life evolved on the Earth, it must have evolved countless times over if the Big Bang occurred 14 billion years ago, as evolutionists believe. And today, many scientists even believe that highly evolved and technologically advanced aliens created life on Earth. It's become mainstream science. You know, science fiction is the number one most popular entertainment genre of them all. And I believe, and correctly as it turned out with my book, that using these sci-fi themes would be a great way of introducing people to creation concepts. You know, it's interesting how big of a subject the UFO phenomenon is in our culture. I mean, all you need to do is bring up aliens and you've started quite a conversation. In fact, I remember in an article that you wrote on creation.com, you mentioned that 80% believe that the government is hiding the existence of extraterrestrial life forms. 64% believe that aliens have contacted humans, and half believe that aliens have abducted humans. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to believe for people who are skeptical about this subject, but in fact those figures would also include a lot of Christians. Uh, from my experience in speaking in churches on the subject, literally hundreds of times, I think those stats are reasonably accurate. Mm. And a lot of Christians come up to me because they've seen things in the sky that they can't explain. And because of our culture, it causes people to believe those unidentified flying objects, you know, may contain extraterrestrials. They're flying saucers from another planet. So yes, uh, a conversation about a good sci-fi movie can lead to a very easy way of starting a conversation where I think you can demolish what's known as the extraterrestrial hypothesis. 
that has an evolutionary basis. The extraterrestrial hypothesis is the idea that aliens are visiting us from a distant star system far, far away, you know, in their hyperdrive spaceships. And there are pretty easy, simple arguments we can use to show, for example, that interstellar travel is not possible within the lifetime of living beings or living organisms, even if we had some advanced future technology. In short, what's depicted in these movies, Scott, is not scientifically possible. It's fun, but it's really not realistic. I'll give you some examples. Uh, Murphy, who's making the movie with me, we've been out filming and we've met lots of curious onlookers who come up to us and you know they see the cameras and say, yeah, what are you doing? And we tell them, it kind of goes like this. I reply, well, you know, we're making a movie about a Christian or a biblical explanation of the UFO phenomenon. And you can see the surprise on their face. And I say, well, you know, unidentified objects are seen on radar and that uh, people claim they've been abducted by aliens. And it's usually met with, wow, I'd love to see that. <laughs> So how often is it when we talk about Christianity to people, they have that reaction? It's kind of people take a step back. But you see what I'm saying here? I mentioned this subject, they want to know more. And speaking of filming, uh, what are the types of people that you've been interviewing for this film? We've interviewed rocket scientists, uh, researchers in the UFO field, both Christian and non-Christian, pastors, teachers. Uh, I'll give you one example, uh, Nick Redfern. Uh, he's written over 40 books, the majority of them about the UFO phenomenon. And he had some really, really interesting things to say that parallels what we believe as Christians. But he comes from a non-Christian perspective. He's kind of the, uh, the Discovery Channel, the History Channel's kind of lead guy when it comes to the UFO phenomenon. But I suppose the thing that impacted me the most, and also Murphy when we were out there, was interviewing what we call experiences. Uh, meeting them firsthand, listening to their stories was really something else. It was traumatizing is probably the best way I can put it. Uh, I felt completely powerless to do anything about it. I didn't understand what was going on. I tried to talk. I tried, tried to, to yell. I was, I was very frightened. I was, I was scared to death because I didn't understand what was going on. I couldn't move. You can't do anything. They're in total control. I don't recall giving them my control, but I didn't have any. Almost everything I was reading or watching was telling me aliens or what was happening. I'd like folks to understand, even if you don't believe that they really met aliens, and of course I don't either, but these people had been traumatized, abused, and some of them were rejected by their family and friends as a result of their experiences. They felt alone. And the sad thing was many of them actually even went to the church for help, but they didn't get any because the church didn't understand how to deal with the subject. It's not meant to be a criticism. It's just something that ordinary pastors and leaders and, and Christians in general have no experience of, and it was just too freaky for them. During one particular interview, and people can see snippets of this, uh, in our trailers, both Murphy and I literally broke down in tears. It's, it's not an exaggeration, as we interviewed Joyce uh, was her name. And she told us her story and how it split her family apart. It was so hard to listen to as she recounted it. And uh, both Murphy and I agreed, we will never forget that day. Uh, but what it did do was it reinforced to us that we were onto something special and we knew these stories had to be told. Here's something else I'd like to say. We said earlier that people have seen things in the sky, uh, claim 20 million Americans have seen a UFO. You know, you and I and scientists, we can't kind of grab that UFO and bring it in and do scientific tests on it. Interviewing experiences, in fact, is the only way to solve the problem, to give an answer to what is really happening out there. So this movie is really like nothing else in the realm of what CMI or even the creation movement has ever done before. And it's my hope and prayer and my belief that this subject matter, this single resource, has the potential to reach more people than anything we've ever done before. You know, it's interesting because uh, we all know what we do on a day-to-day -day basis at Creation Ministries International. And Projects like this are above 
those responsibilities and not just financially but you know for example you are doing a full ministry schedule yet you're fitting this filming in above what you normally do. Uh, very true. Uh, my dear wife is probably wondering if I really had been abducted by aliens because I've been away so much. Uh, but seriously though, it's a subject that's close to my heart. Uh, meeting these people, their stories need to be told. But the most impactful thing this movie is going to have is the revelation of truth that understanding this subject matter has the power to thwart the enemy. Scott, we're in a spiritual battle. Even dealing with creation versus evolution is ultimately a spiritual issue because it's about whether there's a creator or not. Uh, this movie is going to have exactly the same conclusion. So in short, I'd kind of like to say to our supporters and friends out there, um, you know, they, they're the ones that help us make this the best resource absolutely possible. So we do need support to get it finished. Uh, but most of all, um, if anything from this interview, I'd like people to pray. We are delving into the deep area of spiritual warfare and the resistance has been noticeable to all of us in the ministry. I know you would confirm that as well. Well, it could be the most provocative question ever about space. Are we alone in the universe? Are there other thriving civilizations like ours out there? This video released last December by the Pentagon clearly shows an unidentified flying object, and it includes audio of two pilots trying to figure it out. Bill Taylor joins us early tonight and gives us a closer look at this video and how it's prompting an even bigger question. Bill? Yeah, before we get to our troposphere, let's go out beyond the stratosphere. You know, when it released this video, the U.S. Department of Defense said it's conducting studies on UFOs, it's conducting studies on the possibility of alien life. I mean, the vastness of our galaxy, the universe, says it's hard to believe there isn't at least something else out there. The question really is, if ever proven, would we be ready for this kind of reality? Do you feel the government is withholding information from us? And if so, why? Well, that's a, that's a tough question. I'm going to say yes. Brian Tobias has been studying the stars for 45 years. Closing in on a doctorate in astronomy, he questions the video, but not the existence of alien civilizations. I have to be very skeptical about it, you know. And don't get me wrong, something cool, top secret, spy plane, drone, or whatever, is always cool in my books. But I, I just don't think it's, it's enough to validate that, yeah, those are aliens. In December, the U.S. Department of Defense released this video. You can even hear pilots trying to understand. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. Tobias feels the government has more truth that we Americans aren't ready to hear. It's for our own good of the well-being of the human race on this planet. Can you just imagine the religious the cultural, all the other things, the, the, the theological influence that would have, the, the, the hysteria, the mayhem that could potentially cause. Let's talk about religion and how God fits into this equation. If there really is a civilization out there like ours, did God create all of it? Did Jesus die for their sins too? What in our faith says that we're the only people here? Father Pat O'Brien of St. Pius Catholic Church says the Bible isn't going to have an answer to this question. I mean, that would be the wrong place to look. It would be like going to a cookbook to figure out how to get to Houston. And is it really that important for us to know that? We know that God loves us. We know that he, if there's any other creation, any other beings of the place, He loves them. She, he, our God loves them. Father O'Brien feels if there are other civilizations out there, our faith would be fine. Could we handle ourselves? I don't think it would be a challenge to our faith. I think it would be a, to our challenge to how we see ourselves and our egos and how we sort of think we're it. And, and wow. that's where I've always been. I mean, yeah. I, I'm like, you know, I'll believe in when I see him. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. it just is hard. But at the same time, Brian's convinced. Yes, that was, really, that was fascinating. That there's something we don't know. Right, yeah. that the government's withholding. <laughs> Here's one thing I learned, too, the biggest mm -hmm. takeaway. Yeah. The, the size alone, hundreds of millions of light years across is just our galaxy, okay? Mm -hmm. 
My name's Gary Zeltine and I'm the founder and editor of UFO Truth Easing, a magazine dedicated to people who believe that some UFO sightings do represent ET engaging with planet Earth. It's 96 pages and it's sent to you every two months direct to your email address. You don't have to do a thing. If you're really interested in the subject of UFOs, then subscribe to UFO Truth magazine now. It features articles by many of the world's leading researchers, either as guest contributors or regular columnists. I am pleased to announce an exclusive offer from UFO Truth Magazine. Tell Max UFO News viewers. The Max UFO News special offer offers a year's subscription to UFO Truth Magazine for just £11.99. You can find the link to obtain your special offer in the YouTube description box below. Be sure to check it out after the show. Remember the UFO videos released by the Pentagon late in 2017? It turns out there are even more videos lurking in the military files. A man who spent 10 years working on the government's secret study of UFOs says there have been many dramatic encounters with unknown technology that is far more advanced than anything in the U.S. military. Much of the secret UFO study was carried out in southern Nevada. A former intelligence officer saw more of those files than anyone. His name is Louis Elizondo and most of us first heard his name last October when he stood on a stage with rock star Tom DeLonge and other government insiders. It was in this position that I learned the phenomena is indeed real, Elzondo said. Until he stepped out on a stage last October alongside rock star Tom DeLonge and other former government insiders, most of the world had never heard of Louis Elzondo, which is how he liked it. Elzondo's government career was spent in the shadows, mostly as a Pentagon intelligence officer. I was at the top of my game in my career field and I left it all to have this conversation with the American public, he said. The conversation is about UFOs. For almost 10 years, Il Zondo was a central figure in a secret Pentagon program to study unknown aerial threats. These days, he's preparing to relocate to the sleepy beach town of Encinitas, which is where Tom DeLong's to the Stars Academy is based. Let's catch up with everything A Tip for February. As News 8's Alicia Summers reports, the former singer and guitarist for Blink 182 wants to fund research that's out of this world. This is a, a guitar that I used quite a lot on stage. Even if you've never heard of Tom DeLong or the rock band Blink 182, his message about UFOs is hard to ignore. There is a theme a lot of flying saucers in this place. Two years ago, DeLong invited our Las Vegas sister station KLAS inside his To the Stars gift shop in Encinitas. The store is packed with UFO merchandise and books on secret machines detailing how UFOs crashed on Earth during the 1940s. DeLong says secret UFO information was given to him by Department of Defense insiders. We found a life form and then that, that conversation changed my life and I was told there were crashes. His new company, to the Stars Academy of Arts and Science, has attracted so much media attention, the author, director, and musician is no longer doing interviews. He hired a team of experts from the aerospace industry and an intelligence officer who once ran a secret UFO program for the government. It's probably the most important thing I've ever done in my life, even if it sounds like a, the tinfoil hat, little green men kind of conspiracy theory. To the Stars Academy started out by releasing military videos of UFOs, which were recently declassified. We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Okay, I'll take it. One of the newly released UFO videos was recorded in 2004 off the coast of San Diego, and the Navy pilot who witnessed the flying object says he's never seen anything like it. It's never been explained to me. Not a drone, not a satellite. Had no wings, no drone on IR, it has no plume, no exhaust, no nothing. It just did what it did. DeLong wants to raise up to $50 million through crowdfunding to launch entertainment, science, and aerospace divisions in his new company. He hopes to build a ship like this one that can warp through space and time. He also hopes to research brain to computer interface technology human telepathy, and a laser beam that can launch satellites. He says he will release several UFO-themed movies and TV shows this year and also plans to launch a website with a database cataloging all sorts of paranormal activities. My end goal is to build a company that changes the world. Alicia Summers, News 8. 
As you might imagine, DeLong's new business venture is a risky investment. So far, he has raised $2.5 million through his website. If you want more information, you can go to CBS. Real objects, otherwise known as UFOs, may not be finished after all. The civilian contractor for the program was Bigelow Aerospace, which is based here in Las Vegas. Their contract, though, ended in 2012, but the man who managed the program inside the Pentagon, he thinks it's still operating. George Knapp of the I-Team is here with more on his exclusive story tonight. His name is Luis Elizondo, and most of us first heard his name last October when he stood on a stage with rock star Tom DeLong and other government insiders. Elizondo spent Spent 10 years as head of a secret study of unidentified aerial objects. He was also instrumental in the release of official UFO videos recorded by military pilots. We sat down with him earlier this week to ask, among other things, why the Pentagon considers UFOs to be a potential threat. Is it a threat? If it's a threat, is it Russian? Is it Chinese? And yet, these are all normal questions you would ask, whether you're dealing with terrorism or weapons of mass destruction or any issue du jour, right? National security issue du jour. And yet here we are with something that doesn't fit, doesn't fit, doesn't fit. Luis Elizondo has spent most of his adult life protecting his country on active duty in combat hotspots, handling terrorists at Guantanamo and at the Pentagon where he was the point man for ATIP, the Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program. The program collected and analyzed information about encounters between the U.S. military and spectacular but unknown technology, what some would call UFOs. My job in the government at the time really with regarding ATIP was two, twofold, to, to determine what it was and how it worked. Um, not really focusing on, as I said before, who's behind the steering wheel or their intent. I figured if we can answer at least those two first things, everything else we'll be able to explain later. Elizondo says uh, even his immediate supervisor in the Pentagon was unaware of the program. The word threat is built into the name ATIP, and even though the unidentified craft being reported didn't launch an Independence Day type attack on humanity or zap major cities with death rays, the Defense Department had to consider the possibilities. The so called Tic Tac UFO, for instance, was detected over several days in 2004 by personnel with the USS Nimitz Battle Group off the coast of San Diego. It didn't attack, but it demonstrated vast superiority over America's most advanced defense systems. I think if you were to take this issue that we've seen and you have something coming into our airspace or the airspace we control that has maybe a, a Russian f star on the tail or has North Korean tail numbers, I think people would have a much different reaction and response because there's something we can identify and say that is in our airspace and shouldn't be here. You DOD, you CIA, you DHS have the responsibility of protecting us. How did this happen? And yet here we have that same scenario, but there are no flags and tail numbers on the tail. In fact, there may not even be a tail on some of these things. Um, and yet it's crickets. Nobody wants to have the conversation. In 2007, a small group of senators led by Nevada's Harry Reid initiated a program to change the culture surrounding UFO reports. Reid was motivated in part because of classified reports he'd read about UFO encounters over U.S. nuclear bases in which atomic weapons were somehow disabled. The communications in the missile defense installation was shut down. It didn't happen once, more than once. We have things in ships at sea, these things in the water, what is that? The program set up by the Pentagon to assist ATIP was housed at Bigelow Aerospace in Southern Nevada. The contract ended in 2012, but Elizondo believes some version of the study is still ongoing. He thinks it makes sense to study Tic Tacs and other UFOs and compares it to how you might react if someone pierced your home security system. The first thing you do as you come down your stairs, as you look in your living room, you see muddy boot prints in your living room on the carpet that weren't there the night before. Now, nothing's been taken out of your house, nothing's been disturbed, no one's been harmed, and yet every night, despite you locking the front doors and the windows and turning the alarm on, there are muddy boot prints that keep showing up on your carpet. Now, is that a threat? 
One other reason it's seen as a potential national security issue is that Lou Elizondo and Senator Reid say they've seen indications that both Russia and China are studying this as well. And if our adversaries figure out the technology before we do, it could be trouble. Tonight at 11. In December, the Pentagon released video of what seems to be a UFO along with confirmation they fund looking for the things. Hmm. Cajun's Carly Banks did a little digging around Texelma and found there's a lot more evidence of UFOs around here than we thought. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the NSA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, I'll take it. He reported this thing as, uh, as flying very erratically, uh, making maneuvers that if there was a human being inside it, they would be liquid. I think it's the first step, because um, a lot of people think they're out there, so it's, uh, how, how soon this might be, who, no one knows. Investigating UFOs for nearly 60 years, Gary Neitzel says, we are being visited by someone or something not from this earth. I just wonder where they're from, what they're doing here, uh, if we're in jeopardy, jeopardy uh, if they're friendly, if they're not friendly, you just, you don't know. And he's not the only one. According to MUFON's website, there have been UFO sightings in 13 counties in Texoma, four counties in Texas, and nine counties in Oklahoma. You could probably take them back thousands of years. <clears throat> uh, they've been reported, uh, uh, you know, in the Middle Ages, uh, in ancient times, uh, and there you can see different paintings that uh, have what looks like could, could be UFOs in them. Back in the 70s, Arkel Dennis Williams was in the front yard of his childhood home right outside of Sulphur. I noticed an object hovering in the sky, and it was lit up. He says his brother and father, who didn't believe man walked on the moon, saw the object too. And he was right there along with me that we were witnessing a UFO. In broad daylight, he says they saw a UFO. It did uh, some zigzag motions, uh, came closer, got further away, hovered uh, continually for about 15 to 17 minutes and then just did a zip and disappeared. A phenomenon he says many more will see in years to come. Yeah, I believe there's a lot more that we have to witness and I'm pretty sure maybe not in my lifetime, we will witness um, very, very strange effects from the outer space. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the NSA. My gosh. Many people believe there's something out there. Uh, we don't know what exactly, but there's definitely some, uh, you know, technology far advanced of uh, ours that's flying around our skies. Carly Banks, K10 News. Who's to argue? Well, there you go. C. Clark once said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Well, according to the Pentagon, something magical has been flying around in our skies for a long time. A secret study of unidentified flying objects made public last year. Much of the analysis was done right here in southern Nevada. And the main purpose of the study was to figure out how UFOs work. The I-team's George Knapp sat down with the man who ran the program at the Pentagon to ask about the physics of flying saucers. Well, if there's a good thing. You can tell from the voices of the Navy pilots that the encounter with the so-called gimbal UFO back in 2015 was hardly ordinary. For one thing, it wasn't alone. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the NSA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. The pilots wondered if it might be a drone, but advanced sensors showed the unknown object had no detectable propulsion system, seemed oblivious to the powerful winds, and slowed to a near stop before rotating. As I said before, if this was a court of law, 
we are beyond reasonable doubt. Until last October, Lou Elizondo was the point man in the Pentagon's secret study of unknown aerial objects. ATIP was the acronym for the study, authorized by senators, including Nevada's Harry Reid, with the analysis conducted by a civilian contractor, Bigelow Aerospace of Nevada. The primary goal of the study, Elizondo said, wasn't to guess where these things originated, but rather how they worked. I think we've come very, very close to understanding the physics of how it works, and that's very exciting. That is, that is for the first time, we have a very uh, compelling picture that what we are seeing is, is absolutely explained by our current understanding of, of physics and, and advanced physics and quantum mechanics. But Elizondo left the Pentagon in large part because he felt the issue wasn't getting the attention it deserved. The military is still collecting and studying UFO data, he says, but the analysis by Bigelow's team ended in 2012. The now famous Tic Tac UFO case from 2004 is an example of how things worked. The case sat in a file at the Pentagon until it was resurrected during the study. An abbreviated video clip was released last year. After seeing weird radar returns for several days, advanced warplanes attached to the USS Nimitz battle group off the coast of San Diego went to take a closer look. F-18 pilot Dave Fravor, commander of the elite Black Aces, wrote in an initial report that the pilots detected a huge object the size of a 747 just under the surface of the ocean. A 40-foot tic-tac object hovered above it. It takes off and it goes south. And it takes off like nothing I've ever seen. It literally is one minute it's there, and the next minute it's like poof, and it's gone. Fravor said he believes the Tic Tac is not of this world, but that he sure would like to fly one. Elizondo says there have been multiple other Tic Tac encounters with the U.S. military, both before and since. Scientists now think that a single technology explains the amazing things these craft can do. We do believe that now for the first time, perhaps all these observables that we've been seeing, for example, um, sudden and extreme acceleration, hypersonic velocities, low observability, uh, uh, transmedium travel, and, and, and last but not least, positive lift or you know, anti-gravity, is really a manifestation of a single technology. So it's not five exotic technologies we're trying to figure out how it works, it's one. And we think we know that one too. One of the scientists who helped figure it out is physicist Dr. Hal Putoff. He wrote the proposal that helped Bigelow land the contract to study UFOs, and in a recent radio interview, said he commissioned 38 scientific papers during the study to explore exotic propulsion ideas, including what he calls space time metric engineering. In essence, the gimbal and tic tac craft were able to create their own space time bubbles. We believe that it has to do with uh, a high amount of energy and the ability to, to warp space time. And not, not by a lot, just a little bit. Elizondo first went public back in October on a stage with rock star Tom DeLong, who formed something called To the Stars Academy. Dr. Hal Putoff is part of the team, along with Steve Justice, the former top engineer at Lockheed's Skunk Works, who says he wants to build something that can do what the gimbal can do. The question is no longer an if question, it's a when question. George Knapp, 8 News Now. Luis Elizondo confirmed that special materials would likely be needed to manipulate space-time. UFO photos, computer analysis of worldwide UFO images through the decades. This new book covers UFO photo computer analysis of a selection of worldwide UFO images. A variety of detailed images which are analyzed and enhanced using up-to-date processing techniques of unidentified flying objects and anomalies. These have been taken from around the world, it also revisits some well-known documented UFO cases from the past to more recent times. Also included is Jason Gleave's personal UFO account at RAF Cusford in the UK. During 1993 and the important connection with Nick Pope, ex-Ministry of Defense UFO project employee. The book also covers the types of analysis and enhancement software used. The book has the potential to be of extreme interest and is now available on Amazon.
Travel Series tonight, and UFOologist Bill Burns spoke at Schaefer Theater about his experiences investigating UFOs. The event was packed, too. Burns answered questions that the audience had about UFOs. Organizers say that the cultural series itself is a way to bring diverse entertainment to the college community. Whether it's, whether it's seeing a dance troupe on stage or, or step dancers, which we just had a few weeks ago, or uh, we're bringing Coco, uh, the movie Coco, to campus tomorrow, which is a family fun series event where families can bring their, their, their kids to campus to do crafts, uh, crafts with their families. So we, we try to bring something for, for not just our students, but something for the community at large. Mixing the students with the community, integrating the cultural series at MVCC is open to the public. And for more on all of those events, go to our website at WKTV.com. Found in Charama in India, but the fact that they are getting worldwide attention, not only from breakaway archaeologists, but also from NASA. You heard us correctly, guys. Experts are suggesting that after the Great Flood destroyed the ancient empire, the survivors in this region actually encountered extraterrestrial beings. Not only are aliens shown in this art, but they are shown to be wearing spacesuits and even go as far to depict a UFO. Chahatskar State Department of Archaeology and Culture has asked the Indian Space Research Organization and the U.S. Space Agency to help research the compelling find. Indian archaeologist J.R. Bagat said the flying disc, which have three legs and fan-like antenna, resemble UFOs as depicted in modern-day films. Things around the world have reached an all-time high. According to data from the National UFO Reporting Center, UFO sightings experienced a boom in the 1980s. Reported sightings went from less than 5,000 in 1980 to about 10,000 in 1990. But between 1990 and 2000, sightings rose by nearly 30,000. In those 10 years, more than 45,000 sightings were recorded, a record. And it appears the spike in UFO sightings was not an anomaly, but a trend. In an eight-year period from 2002 to 2009, more than 36,000 UFOs were reported. Since then, more than 11,000 more UFOs were reported, with more than 47,000 being cataloged since 2010. Statistician and PhD candidate Sam Monfort brought this information to light with the collection of data from the reporting center. Montfort found that individuals are far more likely to spot a UFO in the U.S. than anywhere else in the world. He reports that on average, there are 2,500 sightings reported per 10 million people. That's 300 times higher than the global median. Northwestern and northeastern states have filed the most report sighting per capita. Perhaps with seven new known planets in the universe, we could experience even more close encounters in the future. For Fox News, I'm Rob Demetrius. As Mac mentioned at the top of the show, he has managed to find all viewers a freebie. The world-renowned Phenomena magazine is giving away February's issue, issue 106. You can find your free copy at www.phenomenamagazine.co.uk, or simply follow the link in the YouTube description box below. Sightings of aliens and UFOs have been reported to police in Cambridgeshire six times in two years, new figures show. The force was asked in a Freedom of Information request how many 999 and 101 calls it had received during 2015, 16 and 17. 
it reported three calls mentioning alien, and three referencing UFO. Two of the reported sightings took place in 2015 and four in 2016. Police did not wish to comment. The locations of the reported sightings were Horton, Peterborough, Brampton and Huntingdon. By 2017 however, the number of sightings reported to police had fallen to zero. Well my friends that's it for another month. If you have enjoyed this month's episode, then please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and click the little YouTube bell to remain notified. Max UFO News is a non-profit educational channel and blog, so all support is gratefully accepted. Until next month, thanks for watching and stay safe out there.